Jeff with Metal Illuminati, and I'm here with Brian from Shadows Fall. What's up, man? Not too much. How's it going? Good, man. So good. we were talking a little bit about, like, um, your last, you, like, changed record labels and stuff? Uh, yeah. You know, we've, we've actually been kind of lucky. We were done every sort of stage of the record industry. We self-released our first record, uh, signed to Century Media, which was, you know, like a good size independent label. Signed with Atlantic, which was, you know, as big of a major as you can get. Reworked a deal with them to do an imprint through them. And now we're with Razor and Tie. Uh, who are kind of almost a combination of major and indie. Like, they have an independent, like, staff, but they are they have things like Kids Bop and all these other huge things that make them a ton of money. Right, right, right. So uh, they're kind of, it's great. You know, you have that indie mentality, but with a bankroll. <laughs> nice. Yeah, talking with Jenna, it seems like they have more time to devote to artists. And stuff. Yeah, because they have this kind of, like, uh, income stream that a lot of labels don't. Right. It's kind of like Hollywood Records has Disney, so they have all those soundtracks, so they can actually take time to develop artists put some money into them that these days is few and far between right so uh it's it, it's a great situation for us they just had great success with all the remains you know a band like that getting top five singles and selling a bunch of records so uh we knew they would understand how to work with a band like us and they also brought a traditional record deal as opposed to all these 360 deals where everyone's just giving up their you know firstborn kid to put out an album absolutely so, <laughs> That kind of experience, you've obviously gotten in, you've learned like the ropes and all that kind of stuff in order to, have they been able to give to you like alternative type things like you're talking about like, you know, like say on video games and, and that Yeah, kind of stuff. you know, that, that's between them and our publishers, that's that's usually the goal now is because, you know, the traditional incomes of record sales right, right, are just, right. are just are hard to come by. Right. So you look for licensing, like placement and anything from, you know, like a little ESPN clip to a sure. movie, any of that stuff. Uh, and they're also really good at just, you know, Using the, you can't fight leaks. You can't fight the illegal downloading. Right. So use it as a promotional tool. Right. You know, at least get the good word of mouth going. All that. Uh, what? Unfortunately, though, just like anything else, if they can't make any money, you can't make new records. Right. Damn right. you, Fear Factory. Yep. Fear Factory They're sound up in the background. <laughs> um, so talk about that. You know, like about like the piracy and all that kind of stuff. I mean, what are your thoughts on like you know kids getting in any which way yeah. fighting the end? Of fighting it or going with it or yeah you know uh, you kind of have to go with it as much as you don't want to to me it is straight up stealing like, yeah. I, I don't like download records occasionally people will burn me a CD of something that I never would have bought right but outside of that uh, I, to me it's just like walking into someone's house and stealing a CD off their coffee table which you know you wouldn't do uh, so it is unfortunate I, I understand it everyone's broken it's how do you compete with free right you know? right right so I know why it happens and I know it's not going to stop so you got to find ways to either you know, make the most of it, which is, you you know, try to at least get the good word of mouth out there, and, and, uh, and you know, you're not going to attack your fans and try and sue them or anything like that. I will break into your house and steal $10, though, right out of your sock drawer, so, <laughs> so you, better, you better lock that shit up tight. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the I'm the same way. I get it sometimes free or whatever, but I'm I'm a different beast, you know. I'll like bring food on the road, bring yeah. like stuff, you know, like whatever, <laughs> crash at my place, whatever. A lot of times people are like, Oh, I downloaded it to see if I liked it and then I was gonna go buy it. It's like, No, you're not. You now you have it. Like, why would you go buy it? You know. So at least if It's crazy, I've seen more and more metal fans actually doing that though. Well, the, the thing is, you know, the artwork is all for metal bands you take the packaging more seriously than like say pop music or whatever where right. it's just, you know, a little photo. Uh, you know, you take the packaging seriously. You want to get the lyrics out there. I used to love reading the thanks list to see what bands people were into. You know, so uh, but that's you know I, that's kind of the way I came up. We still also write our records as like albums. You know, we try and think of side A and side B, which mm -hmm. you know is such a foreign concept now because everyone just hits shuffle. You know? right. But are you so, doing vinyl? Uh, we we've done a vinyl release of every single album so far. We're, and we're you trying do like to, a digital release with it. Uh, usually, you know, and because uh, it, it's mostly no small print. You know, sure. you do like you know a thousand maybe or something like that. And it's for the real diehards, uh, but uh, I, just, I lately I've only been listening to vinyl. I just got a new record player. Yeah, and, uh, me too. That's all I've been doing. So uh, hopefully we can get this new one out. It'll probably just be a small little side deal with someone just to 
just to get it out. Uh, Retribution, the last one came out uh, on two different colored vinyls and all that. So hopefully we do that again with. Uh, re- uh, with uh, but I think that's what it is now. It's like using things, you know, like what the music is being free in, in a sense, you know, because everybody's just downloading it. Yep. Using marketing type things in order to get people to purchase physical things. Totally, you know, like you want to have like. Well, that's that's why vinyl is cool because even if you are going to listen on your iPod, at least you can have this 12 inch yeah. full artwork, right. you know, gatefold cool thing. Sure. You know? Uh, but yeah, even with the CDs themselves, you gotta add the bonus tracks, the DVD, the everything. You know, shit, we gotta show up at your house and like mop the floors, you know, like whatever it takes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but vinyl is one of those things where you know, even if they're not gonna spin it, they just want to have that, even to put on the wall. It's right. so awesome. You Absolutely. Know, so. And then what about like touring? How do you guys set up touring? You guys have it through a specific agency? Yeah, you know, we have a booking agency. We work with a company called TKO, and uh, they usually see what's around, whether they're submitting us for opening spots or trying to route like a headlining tour and see what's out there. Uh, and, you know, touring has really always been the way metal bands survived and made money anyway. It's still that way, but it's, it's actually getting tougher because not only are there way too many bands in the world, uh, you have to kind of package up with other bands because, you know, kids are broke. Yeah. They can't afford to go to a million shows. And, like, if they go to, like, say, one, you know, Mayhem Fest, that's like a $200 day, you know, like yeah. all in. So it's really tough. you got to come up with a way where you give them more bang for their buck keep the ticket price low but then gas prices go up yep. and then you have to split the pie with other bands so and it's, the bus it's, and yeah it's, it's bus really driver <laughs> it's getting harder to kind of uh make the money you could out there you got to really you know like we're splitting everything with fear factory gear crew everything uh and you got to find ways like that to uh you know really make it so you can survive do you have to work like a second job in order to keep uh, up with all this we've or? been lucky so far but now when we're home we usually out of either just why waste the time yeah. or out of boredom, we all do a little something. Like sure. John does lessons, Jay yep. does lessons. Uh, Matt's been producing a lot of bands uh, in his little home studio. Uh, Paul, when he's at home, he goes and works at Whole Foods, the job he's had forever, and they just kind of let him back. You cool. know. And uh, I'll do odd jobs with friends at home, uh, like you know anything from hanging drywall for a day or like going to work in my friend's studio. Uh, you know, like helping out him out with bands. So. You know, but we've been pretty blessed that for the last 15, you know, years, we've pretty much been living off the band, but it's getting harder. Totally. And anything, like, you know, upcoming artists and stuff you'd, like, recommend besides, like, not getting into the metal industry because yeah, it's, like, broken? Know, but... it's, it's definitely, it's a bad time. Like, I, I, I've been trying to help out some younger bands, uh, and uh, you, you try and paint the picture for them, and you want to be realistic, but right. you're like, I'm not trying to crush your dreams right, or anything, right. but uh, you should just update your resume and just do something else. But, uh, you know, the real key now is because uh, record deals are so uh, different and difficult, uh, really get out there and, and spread the word on your own. Open for any national act you can. Get out there and play as much as you can. And at this point, if you're, you're really starting out, give any music away for free you can. Because like, even if you've got a shitty record deal, it's going to be uh, leaked anyway. Yeah. So uh, at this point, might as well go out there and stay on those social network things. Really spread the word. you got to build a grassroots now. Be careful of signing right away to a deal because you may give away everything for a long time. And if your band blows up, entertainment lawyer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and say it does blow up and you sign some shitty six record deal, that you're not going. It, you're stuck with that label for you know until the end of it, or unless they sell you off. Right. Where you, you don't get any of that. Right. Right. So, right. So really, you know, uh, until you really need the full support of a record label or get a deal that is band friendly that you know is safe. Uh, at this point, why not stay independent? You totally. Know? Why not sell that seat if you can? even kickstarter the money to get going do something you know uh because it's just different than when, than when we were before if you got signed they were going to take care of you there was this thing called tour support word does not exist anymore so uh uh it's it's definitely a different game for younger bands cool man thank you so much no worries Illuminati, motherfucker. good luck get a job yeah.